Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bitch Side Podcast channel. I am your host, the HOD of the BSB. Like, share, comment on this video, and subscribe to the channel. Enable notifications to receive all the updates from these match recaps and all the content on the channel, including the Bitch Side Podcast, which you can listen to on Spotify, Google Podcast, or any other platform. And follow us on social media. I'm at SideBSB on Twitter, Bitch Side Pod on Instagram. Help us on the way to our first K here on the channel. And we're coming off straight after the Monday game between Wolves and Liverpool at the Molineux. And Liverpool defeating the Wolves 1-0 in a game that, overall, I think Liverpool was second best, to be to be fair, really. Um, but considering the general form that Liverpool are in at the moment, it's I think pretty pretty important to to win against uh, to win against Wolves. I mean, the, only one win in the last six in the Premier League. It doesn't exactly bode exactly good form before this game um, for them. I think Wolves on a bit of a bad form as well. But I think as far as their home form is concerned, it's pretty decent really um, in, in the league to be fair uh, but I think I like the fact that uh, you know Nunes Perez Santo had a pretty clear idea about what he's going to do in the game he started with a 3-4-3 the usual 3-4-3 for Wolves but I think he tried to move a little bit more um, inside he tried to, to make a little bit of a numerical superiority create that situation in the middle of the park in particular playing I mean almost a 3-5-2 of sorts with Neto given given the free roaming role uh, with no pedence available for injury who's given the free roaming rule around that midfield area behind both Traore and William Jose with Traore of course being relied upon for his strength his you know sharpness his you know quickness and pace to try and cut inside those situations they always try to create a two versus one situations on the flanks in particular for Liverpool on the left hand side really with Robertson usually leaves too much space behind him um, you know the, the big difference I think between Liverpool and Wolves is the fact that Wolves, Wolves game and Wolves football was pretty tidy and pretty neat for most of it while Liverpool's ball was you know not clean in the most of it they lost the ball a lot in the midfield in particular in the first half they didn't exactly feel sharp and incisive you know Thiago, Wijnaldum in particular were moving very diagonally while Fabinho was pretty static I mean these are the kind of the games really where Someone like Henderson would have come in handy, really, but of course he's injured, so he's not available. And you know, um, and I thought, and I thought it was a smart plan from Nuno Espirito Santo to use a Traore to join uh, William Jose in the middle, because the two centre halves of Liverpool are certainly inexperienced. They're still pretty green in the back, and it, they looked quite out of their depths in a couple of occasions. They they made a couple of rear clearances, but I think those clearances were pretty much because their first positioning was pretty bad, and and the last decision was 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 really important for them um, you know Wolves tried to stretch the game out try to pull the Liverpool players out create those spaces for William Jose and Adama Traore William Jose in particular was a pretty weak point and pretty weak link I think of the attack of, uh, of Wolverhampton you know he is a great finisher and if you watched him with Real Sociedad you know what I mean but not the good link up player that Raul Jimenez for example is and he's a big miss in that side and they have been pretty inefficient yeah, going forward since missing that guy and it's not a real coincidence he's very good when linking up things got a little bit better for Liverpool after the first 25 minutes or so they started creating chances creating a couple of opportunities playing a couple of long balls behind the defenders with Mane sneaking in on a couple of occasions having a glorious opportunity uh, rounding it past Patricio but not finding um, the target but the goal came in late on in the first half just as Wolves were pretty close to scoring I would say on a couple of occasions themselves um, you know Jogo Jota their own uh, gone their own former Wolves scoring against them really coming back to the Molineux um, you know he deserved the goal I think he was pretty tireless in the first half he was running he was moving asking for the ball he didn't get a lot of opportunities but the first time really he got a proper ball into his feet he leathers it with his left foot and puts it past through Patricio who could have done really better in that um, in that shot I mean it, he, it was pretty close to where he was but I think it was fizzing low it maybe was a little bit harder than with what he could have expected the first half ended on a pretty good lead for Liverpool I think and maybe against the run of play mostly considering how things went in the first half in the second half Liverpool started a little bit stronger in the second half in the first 10 minutes in particular with the fullbacks moving a little bit quicker Alexander Arnold and Robertson opening the game Vinaldum and Thiago started making more runs supporting the attack even more forward 
and created a couple of early opportunities before Wolves go back on the attack once more. But again, as we mentioned, with William Jose being the weak link really in the attack, he couldn't have delivered a final ball, whether, whether it's finishing or linking up more particular. There's a couple of situations where he could have done something better that may have changed the uh, the decisions and may change the path of and the pattern of Wolves' attacks in a certain point. Fabio Silva came in uh, in the middle of the second half. He made things a little bit better in terms of linking up uh, than William Jose, but the problem with the finishing was still there. Not much in terms of opportunities really for Wolves. Overall, the game was pretty poor in terms of actual big opportunities. Only a couple of them were available for Wolves and only also a couple for Liverpool as well. And, you know, as the game wore on, Liverpool started not caving in, but starting becoming more conservative. Uh, James Milner and Naby Keita were introduced as well. Oxley chamberlain coming in for Diogo Jota. Obviously, Diogo Jota just returned from injury not that long ago, so you don't want to burn him out. And with the game being stopped for around 15 minutes, really, um, you know, with uh, Rupert Tricio suffering a concussion injury, hopefully he's fine because that is a traumatic experience now for the Wolves players, seeing what's happened to Raul Jimenez early on. You knew that there won't be a lot of momentum, um, you know, being built after that stoppage and longer stoppage for 15 minutes or so. Um, late on, after the game restored and game returned to play, Wolves had a couple of attempts, really. They were pressing in the last seven minutes of that game, Liverpool hung on and hung on to the important three points, even giving themselves an important boost really in their quest to return to the top four spots, which looked like a very far possibility um, as of late, and it, and it might just be really overall, considering that general form and what's still um, to play for the other teams behind them, but they move up to six with 46 points, while Wolves stay at third, uh, 13th with 35 uh, points. I think it's a mental victory more than anything for Liverpool, and you know, they were second best to be fair in the game, but definitely took the chance when it mattered. That's it from me for this episode. I was your boy, the HD of the BSP. Like, share, comment on this video of match recaps, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Enable notifications to receive all the updates from these match recaps and all other content, including our podcast. Listen to that on Spotify, Google Podcasts, or any other platform. And of course, there's a Champions League edition tomorrow. Pitch site pod on Instagram, start BSP on Twitter. Follow us there. And until the next time, goodbye.